My name is Brian Scribonia, and on this episode of the Common Sense Financial Podcast. When you visit FINRA's broker check, an advisor's complaint history is available to the public. It can help uncover complaint patterns. And I underscore patterns because unfortunately anyone can file a complaint and there's always context to a situation, but an advisor who has years of complaints may be somebody to avoid. And how long have they been in the business? According to Henrik Decrease 2022 article about advisor failure rates, it was found that 80 to 90% of advisors fail in the first three years of practice. Well, hey, everybody, and thank you for listening and joining us today. We hope that this podcast can provide you with some insights to help you grow and get closer to your goals this year. But before we get started, be sure to subscribe to this podcast. That way you'll be notified about new content and you'll be able to listen to Brian tackle a variety of different topics. So you can subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, SoundCloud, pretty much anywhere that podcasts can be found. And all the links to subscribe as well as past episodes are available on the website at brianscribonia.com. So thanks again for tuning in and let's get started. Opportunities are still there. The attempt at passing down wealth from generation to generation. Consider the outcome, not just popular opinion. And the whole teaching there is about preparedness and being ready. There's a difference between what's real and what's true. You're listening to the Common Sense Financial Podcast. I'm your host, Brian Scribonia. Thanks for tuning in, and let's get into today's topic. When it comes to choosing a financial advisor, there are many factors to consider, but there are six primary attributes that you'll want to seek out when making your selection. According to a May 2022 PIR Newswire survey, 68% of people would like to have a personalized financial plan, but they're not sure where to find a financial advisor. I mean, the remedy to this is quite simple. You have to know in advance what you're looking for before you can begin your search. As Dan Sullivan often says, your eyes will only see and your ears will only hear what you're looking for. The default option to not finding a financial advisor or not having a good one anyway is to lean on family and friends or the internet to gather pieces of information. And that is the equivalent of having a cluster of sticky notes circling your monitor. In my opinion, the problem people face is having too much information and understanding how to use and apply that information as it pertains to their unique situation. The internet and now chat GPT have made things easier to gather information, but for technology to work, you must know what questions to ask and then understand what needs to be done once the information is obtained. Technology doesn't replace thinking, at least not yet. It simply accelerates the processing of information to any inquiry that you give it. And as far as our trusted inner circle goes, the advice they offer is great for dinner parties discussion, but has little to do with building a personalized financial plan. Stock tips, business deals, opportunistic gains, none of that translates to having a plan, nor does it necessarily even apply to your situation. Aside from gathering information, the biggest mental hurdle of financial planning is understanding that planning is not the same as investing. The easiest spoke in the wheel of financial planning is investing. You, you just basically toss ideas about how to invest in the air and act on something, then voila, you're invested. When you invest, whether you lose or gain, you kind of expect the result because other than hoping for a profit, you're really not sure what the result's supposed to be anyway. The nature of investing is obscure because past performance is never a promise of a future result, and of course, it should not be relied upon for making decisions. You don't look in the rearview mirror when you're driving, and you shouldn't base investment decisions on the past. Yet, that's what people often do. They lean on the past when there is this absence of a philosophy helping to guide the decision. And an investment philosophy should be your guiding light, and it's typically born out of having a financial plan. When you remove investing, everything else pertaining to the financial planning process is not as loose in terms of results. For instance, tax and income planning requires precise calculations to achieve specific results, as well as legal documentation requiring accurate wording to obtain the proper protections. Investing is the part of an engine that propels a well-designed financial plan forward, not the other way around. And when something is being designed, you often rely on an engineer, not proverbial sticky notes to bring the design to life. In the world of financial planning, that engineer is a financial professional, which leads to choosing the right fit financial advisor for you. 
So when choosing an advisor, there are many attributes to consider, but there are six that I feel carry more weight than some of the other considerations to help move the cream to the top. First of all, it's what licenses do they hold? Although advisors may all appear to be the same, the reality is that advisors can differ greatly in what products or services they offer the public due to which licenses they hold. Now, there are a variety of series exams that can grant different privileges, so even though someone holds themselves out as an advisor, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're all offering the same products or services. Now, there's a lot of debate about this topic that I discuss in my 2021 Kiplinger article, The Financial Fiduciary Standard Explained. The second thing that I would consider when looking for an advisor is, do they have a record? You will want to check to see if the advisor has a record, and I'm not just talking about performance history or a criminal background, but rather their customer complaint history. FINRA, who is an independent, non-governmental regulatory for all security firms doing business with the public in the United States, is the self-regulatory authority over the licensing. And when you visit FINRA's broker check, an advisor's complaint history is available to the public and can help uncover complaint patterns. And I underscore patterns because unfortunately anyone can file a complaint and there's always context to a situation, but an advisor who has years of complaints may be somebody to avoid. And how long have they been in the business? According to Henrik Decrees 2022 article about advisor failure rates, It was found that 80 to 90% of advisors fail in the first three years of practice. There are many reasons for this, but the primary reason is the steep learning curve involved with serving clients. And without experience, there's not much the new advisor has to offer. In my experience, it takes about five years of training alongside a veteran advisor to have a good grip on how to conduct client meetings. And even then, this typically requires them to lean on a senior advisor to review recommendations after they meet with a potential client. A minimum of 10 years is what I would look for and prefer longer when possible. Even after 30 years of experience myself, I'm still learning and figuring things out and that will only continue. The other thing would be if they have any designations. There are multiple designations financial advisors can earn the right to use, but some carry more weight than others, like a certified financial planner or CFP, a chartered financial consultant, CHFC, a certified private wealth advisor, CPWA, and certified financial analysis analyst, CFA, are among the top designations. And they're some of the more difficult to obtain, but there are quite a few of them out there. The other thing would be, do they own their own firm? In the world of finance, financial advisors can either run their own business or they can align themselves with somebody else's company or firm. There are many big name companies out there who employ or contract advisors to offer a potentially limited range of products and advice to their customers. Many financial advisors begin working with companies like these while they are learning the business and gaining experience. But what eventually happens is the more entrepreneurial advisors, they'll branch out to fulfill their own vision for serving their clients. This is where the smaller advisor firms have the opportunity to build their own teams that enable them to serve their clients within their own system. The advisor is the company owner and creates the processes and selects the services they wish to extend to their clients. They can operate independently, of course, inside industry rules and regulations, to custom fit their services to their clients' needs. These firms come in many shapes and sizes and differentiate themselves by what they do for the clients. These differences are what the consumer should pay attention to. It is ultimately the key to finding the right advisor. Which leads me to the last point here is what do they offer? Most advisors offer investment product services in one way or the other. The difference is whether they sell investments or they manage investments. And this isn't the same thing and is a point of contention inside of the industry. As I already mentioned, investments are part of the engine that drives your financial plan. Even though a well-diversified portfolio is difficult to define, the advisor should have the ability to offer private, public, and fixed assets. You may also want to verify that the advisor can offer a variety of life insurance and annuity products. Regardless of your opinion of of these types of products, they are necessary to manage a risk inside of a financial plan. If the advisor only focuses on investments, they are likely not offering financial planning or just gathering assets to charge a fee. Some firms offer tax preparation independent of their financial industry licenses, but ideally you want your advisor's team to offer tax planning. 
just like investing, there's a difference when it comes to tax services. Tax preparation is preparing a report of what has happened in the past, while tax planning is about mapping a strategy into the future to help minimize liabilities. This is an important distinction and is needed when developing a well-rounded financial plan. Their knowledge of estate planning is critical as well when it comes to protecting and managing an estate as they work closely with a team of attorneys. If they aren't supporting your estate planning, then they are leaving your financial plan potentially exposed to future problems. Over the last 30 years, what I've learned is that there's not an advisor type that is right, just necessarily a right fit for everybody. That's why finding the right fit for you is critical to having a good experience and fulfilling your vision for your future. For instance, my firm works with two sets of people, typically entrepreneurs and their families with at least a million dollars or more to invest and who require a personalized team approach to managing the complexities of their financial lives. And then the other is highly compensated retirement focused executives with at least a million dollars or more to invest and who wish to delegate the responsibility of managing their financial life to a team of financial professionals. If that isn't you, begin asking the most successful people you know about their financial advisor. Maybe ask for an introduction, then have a conversation with them using the criteria I have outlined for you in this podcast. If that seems like too much work, try seeking an advisor online who you resonate with through their articles and podcasts and books, then simply make a connection with them to talk. Of course, if you meet the criteria I have outlined above, you can reach out to my financial planning firm at brianscribonia.com or scribonia.financial.com to see if you qualify to work with our team. That concludes today's podcast. I'm Brian Scribonia. Thank you for listening to the Common Sense Financial Podcast. Thanks for listening to today's show. If you liked what you heard, be sure to subscribe on YouTube and Spotify so that you can receive notifications when we release new episodes. I'm Brian Scribonia, and this is the Common Sense Financial Podcast. Well, thank you for listening to the Forbes Top 10 Rated Common Sense Financial Podcast. Before you go, I want to encourage you to jump over to brianscribonia.com to access the full archive of blogs and podcasts. And if you want to be the first in line to get new content, you can sign up for free on the Brian Scribonia website as well. If you're not following Brian on all the social channels, we'd love to have you join in on the conversation. Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, he's there. Lastly, if you've enjoyed listening to today's podcast, or if you have found value in any of our content, help spread the word by sharing our videos, podcasts, and posts wherever you get them. We greatly appreciate it and are glad that you took the time to join us today. Securities offered only by duly registered individuals through Madison Avenue Securities, LLC, member FINRA and SIPC. Advisory services offered only by duly registered individuals through Scribonia Wealth Management, a registered investment advisor. Tax services offered only through Scribonia Tax Consulting. Mass does not offer build banking or tax advice. Scribonia Financial Group, LLC, Scribonia Wealth Management, LLC, Scribonia Insurance Services, LLC, Scribonia Tax Consulting, and build banking are not affiliated with Mass. Scribonia Wealth Management LLC is a registered investment advisor. Advisory services are all only offered to clients and prospective clients where Scribonia Wealth Management LLC and its representatives are properly licensed or exempt from licensure. Investing involves risk, including the potential loss of principal. Any references to protection, safety, or lifetime income generally refer to fixed insurance products, never securities or investments. Insurance guarantees are backed by the financial strength and claims-paying ability of the issuing carrier. This podcast is intended for informational purposes only. It is not intended to be used as the sole basis for financial decisions, nor should it be construed as advice designed to meet the particular needs of an individual situation. Build Banking is a DBA of Scribonia Insurance Services, LLC. Benefits and guarantees are based on the claims-paying ability of the insurance company, not FDIC-insured. Results may vary. Any descriptions involving life insurance policies and its use as an alternative form of financing or risk management techniques are provided for illustration purposes only, will not apply in all situations, may not be fully indicative of any present or future investments, and may be changed at the discretion of the insurance carrier, general partner, and or manager, and are not intended to reflect guarantees on securities performance. The term build banking, private banking alternatives, or specially designed life insurance contracts are not meant to insinuate that the issuer is creating a real bank for its clients or communicating that life insurance companies are the same as traditional banking institutions.
This material is educational in nature and should not be deemed as a solicitation of any specific product or service. Build Banking is offered by Scribonia Insurance Services, LLC only and is not offered by Madison Avenue Securities, LLC. Our firm is not permitted to offer, and no statement made during this show shall constitute tax or legal advice. Our firm is not affiliated with or endorsed by the U.S. government or any governmental agency. The information and opinions contained herein provided by the third parties have been obtained from sources believed to be reliable, but accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed by our firm. References to build banking, private banking alternatives, or specially designed life insurance contracts are not meant to insinuate that the issuer is creating a real bank for its clients or communicating that life insurance companies are the same as traditional banking institutions. This material is informational in nature and should not be deemed as a solicitation of any specific product or service. Build banking is not FDIC insured. Build Banking is offered by Scribonia Insurance Services, LLC only, and is not offered by Madison Avenue Securities, LLC, nor Scribonia Wealth Management, LLC.